Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and I'm going to look at the most transferred in players at the moment for this coming game week, game week 10. And I've taken the players such that it makes a legal team, i.e. a keeper with a legal amount of defenders, midfielders and strikers. Then I'm going to give my opinion on whether I think it's worth transferring them in and why. So this is just my opinion. You can completely disagree and that's great. Say in the comments why you disagree. So the players we're looking at are for the most transferred in Pope in goal, then a defence of Saliba, Trippier, James, midfield is Madison, De Bruyne, Trossard, Foden, Almiron, and up front is Haaland and Kane. And the way I do this, I look at each player one at a time and I consider the four different ways in which you may transfer them in. So I look at a no hit, which means you've got one or two free transfers and you can just switch players around and bring the player in. I look at taking a minus four. So as you know, if you do more than one or two transfers a week, it would cost you points. The wild card chip, which means you can do as many changes as you like and you keep them. And there's the free hit chip where you make as many changes as you like, but the following week your team reverts to what it was. So most transferred in Pope, his upcoming six fixtures are Brentford at home, Man United away, Everton at home, Tottenham away, Villa at home and Southampton away. Now he's gone up to 5.3 million, so he's one of the most expensive keepers now, and it's worth keeping that in mind. So he's, I think, maybe only 0.2 less than Edison from Man City. So if it was no hit, yes, I'd bring him in. So supposing either I had nothing else to do, I wanted to switch a keeper around, or maybe my keeper's not playing, I'd happily bring him in. No problem with that. You want a keeper that's going to play. I wouldn't pay a minus four for him unless I had... A for some reason, both my keepers were out and I had no keeper. Then I would take a hit to bring him in because you need a keeper. But generally, I wouldn't take a hit to bring in Pope. On a wildcard chip, I'd be very happy to bring Pope in. You're rearranging your team, getting it set up up to game week 16. He's got a good run of games, no problem there at all. And even games like Man United and Tottenham away where you think they are more difficult, he can still get bonus points, save points, and he may get a clean sheet. On a free hit, that just means what's his next game? His next game is home to Brentford. I'd be happy to play Pope for that. So that's what I would do for Pope if it was my team. Trippier. So Newcastle defender. He's obviously got the same fixtures as Pope. On a no hit, I'd bring him in. No problem there. Minus four hit. Tentatively, yes. So depends on who I was taking out would be the answer to that. So if I was taking out a defender who I thought in the next two or three games no chance of getting a clean sheet and they're not going to get a return, then I think it probably would be worth it. He's going to get the four points back. But I wouldn't take out a defender, say like Reese James, for Trippier. That just wouldn't make any sense to me. So it depends who I was taking out. But if I was, I would take a minus four hit to sort out a problem by putting Trippier in. That would not be a problem for me. Wildcard chip, yes, of course, I'd take him. No problem there. Free hit, yep. Next game's against Brentford. I would take Trippier. Saliba, he's at home to Liverpool, then away to Leeds, then he has no fixture. Away to Southampton, home to Nottingham Forest, away to Chelsea. I wouldn't, even if I had no hit, I wouldn't take him. So if he was free, I had nothing else to do, I still wouldn't take Saliba. Because he's got Liverpool at home, probably not going to get any points from that. Leeds away, that could be quite a feisty game, and then he's not even playing a game. So I wouldn't bring him in for that. Minus four point hit, obviously I wouldn't take him if I wasn't doing no hit. Wildcard chip, I've got a tentative no. The reason I've done that, if I was wildcarding this week, it may be that my long-term plans is to have Saliba and it's such that I've got plenty of people to play for game week 12 and for some reason five million is a good price point for me. There would be some circumstances where I would bring him in on a wildcard chip. But it's generally a no, but yes, there are some circumstances where perhaps it would work in your favour to do it. And a free hit chip, no, why would I bring the defender that's at home to Liverpool? Reese James, they're at home to Wolves, then away to Villa, away to Brentford, home to Man United, away to Brighton, and then home to Arsenal. I would bring him in. If I didn't have him and I had a free hit, I'd bring him in. For a minus four hit, I wouldn't bring him in. Unless, as I've said before, I had a problem I had to sort out. Maybe I was a player short or something. But his run-ins 
quite nice. It's not awful, it's not great, and he could get a return in any game, but I wouldn't take a minus four. If I wanted him, I'd just get him next week. On a wild card chip, I'd absolutely get Reese James. Next game, they're home to Wolves. Last I heard, they don't have a manager. I would absolutely play probably any Chelsea defender that I thought was going to play against that. So, yep, yeah, free hit, I would take Reese James. De Bruyne, excellent player. Next few fixtures, they're at home to Southampton, which could be an incredible scoreline for any of the uh, Man City players. Then away to Liverpool. Then they've got a blank game week. Then they're at home to Brighton, away to Leicester and home to Fulham. There's a reasonable chance De Bruyne is going to get a good amount of points apart from in game week 12. I wouldn't bring him in though. The reason I wouldn't bring him in is his cost. For that money, there would be five other defenders I would rather bring in and then use that money elsewhere in the squad. So he's a very good player. He could be the top scoring player in the next five or six weeks. But I think there are other players that could do better for the for cheaper. And obviously I think Haaland's probably going to do better than that. So obviously I wouldn't take him on a minus four hit. Wild card chip, no. Now I've got the no hit and the wild card as tentative no's there, orange. Because I wouldn't, I could understand why you could put an argument to bring him in, but it wouldn't fit my strategy. I wouldn't want to put all that money on that one player when I'd have another premium somewhere else. Free hit chip, yes, okay, if it's a one week just for Southampton, then you've lost him again for the Liverpool away and game week 12 where there's not even a game. So free hit, I would take him. The others, I'm going to say for me, it's a no. Madison, away to Bournemouth, home to Palace, home to Leeds, away to Wolves, home to Man City, away to Everton. I'd bring him in. Any circumstances, if Madison wasn't in my team, I would take a hit to bring him in this week. I would just get him and I'd keep him until game week 16. So he's an absolute no-brainer at the moment. Trossard, he's clearly an excellent player. They're at home to Tottenham, away to Brentford, home to Forest, away to Man City, home to Chelsea, away to Wolves. For a no hit, I'm saying tentatively yes. I'd be comfortable bringing him in. I could probably find four or five other midfielders I would rather have. But it may be because of the value of the squad elsewhere and the money I've got. Like if I only had 6.7 to spend on a midfielder, I already had, say, Martinelli. And maybe there's another one that's quite cheap you quite like. Then I could see myself bringing in Trossard. He's a perfectly okay uh, midfielder to bring in. But it's tentative. I, For my own team, I wouldn't bring him in. There'd be other players I'd rather have. But long term, I'm sure somewhere down the season, he'd be absolutely worth having. Obviously, from minus four, I wouldn't get him. Wildcard chip. Tentatively, yes. Again, for the same reason. If you assemble your wildcard team for the next several weeks, it may be because of the price point he's worth bringing in. Free hit, I wouldn't bring him in. Home to Tottenham, he may do all right, he may not, but I think I could probably get other players who've got easier games this week that I'd rather bring in to him. Foden, 8.1 million. Same fixtures as De Bruyne, of course. No hit. If he didn't cost anything, tentatively, yes. Again, the issue is this coming game week's good, but then away to Liverpool and then a blank. There are other midfielders that over the next three weeks potentially have better fixtures like Madison, like Zaha, like Bowen. And they're around a similar price. Zaha's actually a bit cheaper. So I wouldn't be bringing him in. I Maybe if you had those three I mentioned and any other good players, you had nothing else to do and you were simply replacing... Fernandes, supposing you've got for Man United, you might think, oh, I'll bring in Foden for that. But mm, it's a dodgy one. I wouldn't, but I can understand why you would. For a minus four, I wouldn't bring Foden in. Wildcard chip. See, I've put a yes for this because for a wildcard, you're thinking, what am I doing for my next maybe six weeks and beyond? And I think for a long-term hold, although it looks a bit different to the no hit, you're building the whole structure of the team so maybe I would bring him in. I am fully intending to bring in Foden for maybe game week 13. It's just, if you brought him in now, you're bringing him really potentially for maybe one game, that's Southampton. A free hit, absolutely bring him in. For the game against Southampton at home, of course you'd want him. Almiron, Newcastle. Now he was very popular 
before the season started, then he didn't seem to do much, and so people got rid of him, but he clearly is a good player. They're at home to Brentford, away to Man United, home to Everton, away to Spurs, home to Villa, and then away to Southampton. Tentatively, no one to hit. The reason to bring him in, because he isn't a right player, is he's moderately cheap, and it might be by buying him, you can then buy another player somewhere else, because maybe you've got two free hits. For a minus four, I wouldn't bring him in. On a wild card, I don't think I'd bring him in, but possibly I would, again, if it worked out with a price point. But I think I could find five other midfielders that I'd rather have to Almiron. On a free hit, potentially, I would bring him in, because, again, you're looking at what am I doing for the next several weeks, and because of his price point, and he does have Brentford and Everton and Villa all at home, maybe he is worth having. So he wouldn't be first on my list, but as somebody who enables me to get other players that I want... He's a certainly a very good player. Haaland. Same fixtures, of course, as De Bruyne and Foden. If you've not got him, you bring him in. If, if you have to sell a couple of players to fit him in there, that's what you do. You're, if you don't have Haaland and you're not captaining him, you run the risk of falling further and further behind in the league. So he's just a very easy choice to bring in. Kane, the other striker. So there are... Away to Brighton, home to Everton, away to Man United, home to Newcastle, away to Bournemouth, and then home to Liverpool. So for me, under no circumstances, would I bring in Harry Kane? Yes, Harry Kane's really, really good, but I would have Haaland. And then I would spread my funds throughout the rest of the team to get solid players in a lot of positions. So for my own team, I've only got one premium, and that's Haaland. And then the rest is spread out. So I wouldn't be buying Kane. Now, something to clarify here is we could all, we possibly all have our own um, biases. So this game week just gone, game week eight, I took a hit to bring in Vardy. That's because I used to see Leicester play. I really like Vardy's attitude and I'm only going for top two and a half percent. So if it turns out it was a bad move, I don't mind because I have the fun of having Vardy in my team. I'm not expecting to get top of the whole competition, so it's kind of all right. So it may be, for example, with Kane, where I said, under no circumstances would I get it. You may be an ardent Spurs fan and you just love the idea of having Kane in your team, in which case it is absolutely fully justified. Equally, you might be perhaps a Man United player that can't stand anything City and as much as you like the game, you don't want any City players. Therefore, you would be justified in having Haaland and you could have a lot of fun trying to do well without having any Man City players in your team. But I think that'd be very difficult. So yeah, that's it. That's my opinion on the 11 players to transfer in. The top 11 players that would make a team. That's what I would do with them. I hope that was a little bit interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.